All right, let's now shift our attention to what is happening in Palestine, where according to reports that have come in, the conflict between the State of Israel and Hamas is escalating. Now, according to reports, the two sides have engaged in the biggest escalation so far since the end of the 11-day long war that happened last year. Now, Israel claims that militants from the Hamas group started firing volleys of rockets into the State of Israel. And of course, as a right to defend itself, Tel Aviv claims that it carried out massive missile strikes inside the Gazan territory. Now remember, all of this has been happening for the last several days where the Israeli police has raided inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and Hamas claims that these are rockets that it has shot to warn off the Israelis against carrying out those raids. Now many of these rockets fell in the southern Israeli city of Sederot. Hamas said that it had fired these surface-to-air rockets at the Israeli planes, prompting the Israelis to carry out some major missile strikes inside central Gaza. This also led to further launches of at least about four more rockets by the militants in the besieged territory. Now, Hamas is the Islamist movement which presently controls Gaza. And Israel's army has said that its fighter jets targeted two training camps that were used by Hamas. One was said to be a military post and another a tunnel complex which contained raw chemicals used for manufacturing of rocket engines. Now, according to the Israelis, no casualties have taken place despite the bombings they've carried out inside the Gazan territory. Now remember, over the course of the last 10 plus days, the focus has been in the flashpoint in Jerusalem at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound that the Muslims call the Haram al-Sharif, which is the third holiest site in Islam. The conflict has been heightened in part due to the Jewish Passover festival that has coincided with the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Now, Al-Aqsa is the third holiest site in Islam. It is also, interestingly, a part of this complex, known as the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall, is also revered by the Jews. The Wailing Wall is the last standing structure from the Temple of Herod, the second temple of the Jews that was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. And this is the Wailing Wall at which the Jews congregate to offer their prayers. The Palestinians say that Israel is violating a centuries-old policy by allowing more Jewish worshippers to enter into the Muslim sacred compound. According to policy, non-Muslims can actually visit the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but they're not allowed to do their prayers there. The Israeli leaders have ever said that they are ensuring freedom of worship for all religions in Jerusalem. Now, since the month of March, the Israeli forces have killed at least about 29 Palestinians in West Bank raids, while a series of deadly Arab street attacks have resulted in 14 Israelis getting killed. Now, early on Wednesday, hundreds of far-right Jewish protesters marched towards Jerusalem's Damascus Gate. The ultra-nationalist demonstrators waved the Israeli flags. Some even shouted, death to the Arabs. But the police, of course, blocked them from reaching the Damascus Gate and the old city's Muslim quarter. So these are the far-right Jews who are trying to storm inside the Al-Aqsa compound. And this is the reason as to why so much of strife is happening at this point of time. The far-right lawmaker Itamar bin Giver led the protest after being barred from the Damascus Gate area. The Prime Minister Naftali Bennett had said earlier in a statement that he had blocked the rally for security reasons. It is embarrassing. It is sad. I will not confront them. I fight for them. But I'm not moving. I will not give up. And if not today, then tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then the day after. Jerusalem is the city of the, uh, the capital of, the, of Israel, the nation state of the Jewish people. We lived in a reality where Jerusalem was divided into two. And we're never going to accept that reality again. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.